over the last 150 years, since the day of Charles Darwin, biologists are getting a better and better understanding of the human being, of animals in general. We are now close to the point when we have enough biological knowledge to understand what shapes the feelings and desires and choices of human beings. At the same time, computer science is advancing very rapidly and it gives us greater and greater computing power. When you put the two together, the new understandings of biology and the immense computing power, you get, for the first time in history, you get the opportunity. create external systems, external algorithms that can understand me and my feelings and my desires and my choices much better than I can understand them. It was never possible in the past and it will change the way people make decisions about everything. The most obvious example, and we start seeing it happening already today, it's in the field of medicine. How do people make decisions about their health, about their medical condition? In the past, they relied on their feelings or on the feelings and knowledge of their doctor. Now, they increasingly rely on computer algorithms that understand my body and my health better than I understand them that know you better than you know yourself. A very famous case to illustrate this point happened two, three years ago with the actress Angelina Jolie. She published her story in the New York Times. Um, that she went to do a DNA test, and the DNA test revealed that she was carrying a mutation in the BRCA1 gene, and that according to statistics, about millions of women, women who carry this rare mutation have an 87% chance of getting breast cancer. Now, Angelina Jolie went and did a, a, a test to see whether she has breast cancer, and it turned out she did not. She did not have the disease at the time. But she nevertheless decided, probably very wisely and bravely, to listen to the algorithm. Her feelings were telling her, you're perfectly okay, Angelina. You don't feel anything wrong. You don't have any pain. There is nothing to worry about. This was her feelings. But the computer said something very different. The computer said there is a time bomb ticking in your DNA. And unless you do something soon, this could be a death sentence for you. And she preferred to listen to the algorithm. Her feelings were telling her, you're perfectly okay, Angelina. You don't feel anything wrong. You don't have any pain. There is nothing to worry about. This was her feelings. But the computer said something very different. The computer said, there is a time bomb ticking in your DNA. And unless you do something soon, this could be a death sentence for you. And she preferred to listen to the algorithm. And she had a double mastectomy, cutting off both her breasts um, in order to avoid getting breast cancer. And this is how more and more people will get more and more decisions, very important decisions, about their life, about their health. And this will spread to more areas of life. If 
In the Middle Ages, we lived in a taste age. People believe in taste. When you have a big decision to make, listen to the Bible, listen to God. Then we enter the humanist age. Human, human feelings were the source of authority. You have a problem, listen to your feelings. Now we enter the dataist age. You have a problem, don't listen to the Bible, don't listen to your feelings, listen to Google, listen to Facebook, listen to Apple. They know you better than you know yourself. They even know how you feel better than you know yourself. And it will start with simple things, like which book to buy and read. So in the Middle Ages, you wanted to read a book, the priest would come and tell you, read the Bible. It's the best book in the world. All the answers are there. Then in the humanist age, uh, people said, no, just follow your feelings. Just follow your own taste in literature. Now you go to the Amazon virtual bookshop. And the moment you enter the website, an algorithm pops up and says, I know you. I've been following you. And based on what I know about you and millions of other readers, I recommend this or that book to you. But this is still very primitive. If you read a book on Kindle or on a smartphone, then you should know that the book is reading you while you are reading it. For the first time in history, books are reading people. As you read a book on Kindle, Kindle follows how fast you read each page or how slow, which gives it some indication of what you like or dislike. But this is still very primitive. The next stage is to connect Kindle to face recognition software. There is today software that can recognize emotions by analyzing your facial expression. This is how people recognize emotions. How do I know what you feel? One of the best ways is to look at your face. And there is a different facial expression when you are bored or angry or joyful or fearful. Computers are now learning to do it. So as you read the book, the book knows when you laugh, when you cry, when you're bored, when you're angry. The final step is to connect Kindle to biometric devices on or inside your body, which already exist and can monitor your blood pressure, your heart rate, your brain activity. So you read a sentence in the book and Kindle, which means Amazon, knows the exact emotional impact this sentence had on you. By the time you finish the book, you probably forgot most of it. This is usually what happens when people read books. But Amazon will never forget anything. By the time you finish reading a book, it will know exactly who you are, what is your personality, and how to press your emotional buttons. And based on that, it can recommend not just books, but far more important things like what to study, where to work, even whom to marry. People will not ask their parents or friends or their feelings, whom should they marry? They will ask Google and Amazon and Facebook. And as people increasingly rely on these algorithms, they are likely to lose the ability to make decisions themselves. Because if you don't use it, this ability, you lose it. It's like finding your way around the city. The more you rely on Google Maps, the less able you are to find your own way. You become completely dependent on it. So this is likely to change the very frame, the very meaning of human life. For most of history, humans thought about life as a process of decision-making. You reach an important junction in life and you need to make a decision. And then you make a decision, you go forward, you reach another junction, you make another decision, and this is life. This is the story of your life. This is what democracy is based on, the free market is based on that, humans making decisions about their lives. Uh, most of art is about that, like Christianity. 
You have to choose good and not evil. And your eternal life in heaven or hell depends on making the right choice. So human life was thought about as a process of decision making. Now, what will happen in 50 years if whenever you reach an important decision, you just ask Google? Just try to think about your favorite movie or favorite theater play, like Shakespeare play. And whenever Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet need to make a decision, they just say, hey, Google, what should I do? This is the kind of life, for better or worse, that we are now preparing for ourselves. Um, these immense new powers of getting to know our body and having better and better artificial intelligence, they are going to make humankind as a whole even more powerful than ever before. The big question is whether it will make us any happier. And here, there is reason to be skeptical. Because as you look at the whole of human history for the last 100,000 years, from the time we were just apes in East Africa, what you see is that humans are very good in acquiring power, but they are not good at all in translating power into happiness. Because they don't really know what happiness is and what are the deep sources of happiness and suffering. And what you see is that as the condition of humans improves, there is more food, there are bigger houses, there are better vehicles, people don't become happier, their expectations increase. What you see throughout history is that as human power increases, human happiness does not increase. It's human expectations that increase. And at a very deep level, the problem is that the basic reaction of the human mind to achievement and pleasure is not satisfaction. It's craving for more. Even when you feel very good, a very nice, pleasant feeling in all your body, the basic human reaction to that is, eh, I want more. And this basic reaction, I want more, is what made humankind so powerful, but is also preventing us from becoming more satisfied and happier. And if we are not careful, then in the 21st century, we may become as powerful as gods, but we will be very dissatisfied and miserable gods. Finally, one last comment or idea, and we'll finish with that. None of the predictions I made here are prophecies. Nobody really knows how the world would look like in 10 or 20 or 50 years. Because technology is never deterministic. You can use the same technology for very different social and political purposes. We saw it in the 20th century that you could use the same technology of trains and electricity and radio and television and so forth to build a communist dictatorship or a fascist regime or a liberal democracy. The electricity did not tell you what to do with it. And there is a very famous image of the Korean Peninsula at night taken from outer space where you can see the difference between the choices people make really from outer space. You see South Korea as a sea of light, and you see North Korea as almost completely dark, like the sea, like the ocean. It's not because of a difference in technology. The North Korean also know about electricity. They just chose to use it in a very different way. It's the same in the 21st century. Our increasing knowledge about biology and our increasing knowledge in computer science will give us immense new powers, but they will also give us new choices, and they won't tell us what to do with the new technologies. If you find some of the scenarios that I've outlined, if you find them frightening, you can still do something about it. Thank you.